Here now, Rebecca Heinrichs, national security analyst and Hudson Institute senior fellow. Um, Jennifer Griffin laid it out really well there. There's a lot of murkiness surrounding this attack on the Russian oil depot, Rebecca. Um, but you say in uh, your Washington, uh, pardon me, your New York Post um, piece that that the war is at an inflection point. You talk about the fact that the Ukrainians have held on to control of major cities. You also say they block the Russians from essentially a very quick decapitating military. Victory, and I would look at this story and say, "Wow, the Ukrainians are really being offensive here now, rather than being defensive." So, is this a game changer? Well, the Zelensky government has done what so many people didn't think they could do. They have not only resisted the a very quick decapitation effort on the part of the Russians, but they're now retaking cities that the Russians held. And Zelensky himself has said, we are at an inflection point. Stop holding us back. We don't, our military aim is not to just bleed the Russians dry. We would like to win. It's time for the Ukrainians to go on the counteroffensive. They have the momentum. And so the quicker they can do this, um, the quicker that we can get to actual peace agreements, get the Russians to actually desire to take an off ramp. They're not going to desire to take an off ramp if they're the ones that are willing or that they're the ones that are actually winning. And, and so we now is the time to infuse the Ukrainian government with all these different kinds of weapons that the, the Zelensky is asking for so that we can get to a just peace and not just peace at any cost. Well, how do they make that happen, right? You, you say we need the weapons, and, and so many people will agree. We need weapons or give them weapons without any kind of restrictions. Um, Zelensky has essentially begged NATO and the United States, you say, for these weapons, yet they still don't have enough. So what's the agenda here? Because you also sort of lay out in your piece that it's the Biden administration, you know, trying to push for peace, but pushing for peace at any cost. Well, that's right. There's essentially two blocks in the NATO alliance. One block that is just pushing for, let's just end this thing. Let's give the Russians what, have, what they want. Um, the Ukrainians aren't going to win this in the long run. And so let's just get to a peace. If those people are from sort of the, the Western Europeans, the, those in the East, the Central Europeans and the Brits, Poland, the, the Baltic countries, they want to give Zelensky they're the Polish MIGs. They want to give Zelensky the, the kinds of military equipment to actually help Zelensky go on the counteroffensive. And when Biden went over there, um, he kept talking about NATO, um, you know, agreement on all these things. And he glossed over the divide between the two blocks. He should side with Poland and the Brits and those countries that actually want to help Zelensky give the, the Russians a really crushing counter blow. And so that's where I think um, we need to go. The, the Biden administration says that they're doing all they can, but they do keep making these decisions distinctions between escal escalatory, non-escalatory, and defensive and offensive weapons. And there really is no distinction there. We've got to help Zelensky win. Now is the time to do it. You know, we're focusing a lot on what's happening actually on the ground in Ukraine, um, but there are these tangential strategic relationships as well. And one that we focused on and one that you've written about is um, the relationship with China as well. Yet you've got the EU also potentially lobbying China to tell Putin to end the war. I mean, it's a lot of different dynamics happening behind the scenes right now. Well, that's right. I mean, they're, the Chinese and the Russians essentially have a de facto alliance. We saw this in the Beijing Olympics, where Xi Jinping essentially gave Putin the green light to invade Ukraine. Now there's reporting that, they're, that the Chinese actually may have conducted cyber attacks against the Ukrainian forces, not confirmed reports, but early uh, media reports. And so, um, you know, this idea that the EU wants the Chinese government to actually pressure the Russians to end the war, I think is just, um, it's just dreaming. I mean, I think that the CCP he had all of this baked in about how this war was going to go, and they're not going to pressure the Russians to end this conflict. Um, it's actually going to work out well. And the CCP is watching how this conflict plays out. They're making notes. They're learning so they can adapt their own forces for their own nefarious um, right. planning that they might have against Taiwan. Yes, and um, they've been working on those plans, it seems, for quite some time, just waiting for the right moment potentially to pounce, as Putin did um, with this situation in Ukraine. Rebecca Heinrichs, thank you so much.